All right, Mike Campbell here from Boxing Talks, down here at Bad News Boxing Gym in Texas City. Caught up with my man Felix Cora Jr., cruiserweight prospects uh, contender, we'll say. He's uh, preparing for a Friday Night Fight main event next week against Dar uh, Darnell Dingling Man Wilson. Is that right? He was coming off a fight against Owen What the Heck Beck. Had to be a matchup with two of the worst nicknames ever. Uh, what do you know about your opponent, man? Basically, I know very little about him. So he, he, we know he's a last minute sub. We know Dale Brown was your supposed to be your opponent. Uh, you're defending your belt, the USBA. Uh, sorry, NABA belt. Uh, Dale Brown dropped out. Do you know what the reason was? I have no idea what the reason was. I'm sure it was personal. I mean, on the lines of that, but I know that uh, they would have replaced him with somebody worthy of uh, giving a good match. So I'm taking this fight just like I would with uh, the Dale Brown fight. I mean, I try not to get into the politics of boxing. I mean, I'm sure he had his own personal reasons why he pulled out. And, uh, I'm not arguing against that. I'm just preparing for what's yet in the store. What's yet in the Okay. Now, before that, you had a match against Steve Cunningham, you know? One thing about you is you're always on the schedule. The fights can always fall out, and you're always, uh, you've been hit active one fight in the past year, and the fans, the fans don't get to see you much. You, you, you fall out of the top ten in a lot of organizations in, in the box rec. Um, what's been going on? I know you've got management issues, promotional issues. Why haven't you been getting in the ring? Well, you know, circumstances, whenever you go to a professional fight and you look on the bottom of the car, it clearly states that things are always subject to change. So that's pretty much been the thing for me. I mean, you know, at one point in time, things can be scheduled according to plan, and at other times, they can pull right out. So boxing is a game of adjusting. I mean, you have to be ready for anything. And, uh, the key is to stay ready, you know, because you may be promised something and, 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 and at the last minute, they, they may pull out. How many fights that you know of that fighters have pulled in at the last minute to replace other fighters? And, uh, you know, that's how possible upsets yeah. happen. So I have to be careful and very aware. Well, what I think is happening is a lot of guys are seeing your name as a, a ranking, thinking, oh, I can take this guy out. But, but then they see some come along and they find out who you are. And then they, they change face and run the last minute. Well, I'm going to say that, you know, there's circumstances that play on that. You got, you got, see, boxing is a business. Uh, a lot of guys don't want to risk their position by uh, 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 taking chances. So I wouldn't say that I'm a, a, a supposed to be a threat to anybody. Like I say, I consider myself a journeyman. You know, even as a champion, you know, uh, the minute I start thinking I'm a champion, it's the minute I'm going to be humble. So, you know, I like to look at myself as the next man trying to bump me off, trying to take my position at the top. So I look at every fight like that, you know. I, I take everybody seriously, everybody as a champion, because the minute you don't, that's the minute you'll be down. Yes, you know, yes. I, I know how hard it took me to get to this position, so I don't want to get that position up. So maybe the fans aren't so familiar with you. Let's, let's go back into your background a little bit. I uh, grew up in Galveston, yeah, home of Jack Johnson. I know that's personal to you. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, uh, Galveston is my hometown. Where I'm born and raised, you know. Uh, it's a town like any other town. You know, we got our ups and downs, you know. Uh, I'm sure in due time that the, the town will learn to embrace uh, 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 this, this, what it has, you know, and, uh, and in due time that I can open the doors possibly for some for some common attractions there. But uh, you know, for the time being, I'm going to go where the getting is good, and if other people can provide that service for me, then that's where I'll be, you know, and, and to they comply with that. But uh, I try not to worry about the circumstances that take place on my island. You know, I got a lot of people who work for me there, and, you know, a lot of support, so. I'm going to continue to represent my, 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 my town, you know, where I'm from, and I'm going to try to establish a legacy that was once before, Jack Johnson, of course, and be the next cruiserweight champion of the world and heavyweight champion of the world if possible. God's giving me that opportunity. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the cruiserweight division a little bit. Uh, we talked about that earlier. How out. You seem to be a natural 195, 200-pounder, a natural cruiserweight. Uh, a lot of people don't give cruiserweight division as the respect it's due because uh, it's sort of a, a stepping stone, you know, guys on their way up to heavyweight. Uh, you see yourself staying as a cruiserweight for a while. Uh, if, if you win championship, do, do you think you end up fighting at heavyweight down the line? Well, possibly. I, I know uh, one thing in the sport of boxing, you've got to take one fight at a time. And I'm, I'm not in a big hurry. I'm 26 years old. You know, uh, uh, I don't want to get too old in the sport to where I can't uh, uh, <laughs> provide the best for 
fans and everyone else and myself, but I want to accomplish as much as I can and establish myself at a young age so where if I do move up in time, then I'll be young enough to, to prosper and excel in the heavyweight division. So, you know, it's, 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 it's going according to plan and I don't want to change it. I'm sure everything happens for a reason and God's good time, you know, and I'm just taking it one step at a time. Okay. Uh, we know you had an extensive amateur background, yeah? Uh, fought amateur for, for a while in Texas and nationally. Uh, tell, tell us a few of the uh, amateur titles you won and, and maybe uh, mention a few guys you beat as an amateur. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm captured the Golden Glove Championships and uh, the USA State Championships. And, uh, I've made it to the Nationals numerous times. You know, I, I felt I should have made the Olympic team. But, you know, like I say, circumstances happen. Things may not go your way. The key is to not give up. You know, you know, so to stay focused and uh, carry on with your dreams, give ups and downs, you know. Things are going to come away to try to discourage you, you just have to block them out. And, uh, you know, everyone I fought up until this point has been great opponents. The reason what makes me the day, you know, everyone. I mean, I've been, I, I fought and competed against some of the best in the world and the nation, I believe. And, uh, you know, I take nothing away from them. Uh, to say I'm the best is just totally... It's totally going against the cause, you know. I don't consider myself the best, you know. I, I think I'm okay. I still have a long ways to go. But uh, you know, until I reach that that, that that big dance, that promised land, and then I could then I could say, yeah, I'm the best. But even at that time, I'm not the best because I got to go back to the drawing board and defend that that crown. So. So, I think you're way too humble. I know, I know you like to give back to your sport. Your father runs a gym here uh, in Texas City. Uh, you guys have an amateur team and you're training amateurs. You help train amateurs quite a bit. Um, you always give back to the youth. You want to say something about that, about training the kids? I mean, you can see it in here, the other boxers in here. You're working with them, telling them what to do. Maybe they, they, they haven't seen something you've already seen. Or they, they, they want to get to where you're at. Well, you know, um, I mean, in the sport of boxing, people come and people go and you try to do what you can with what's given to you. You try to inspire who you can inspire. And, uh, you know, I, I've met a lot of people on the way and I've worked with a lot of people and, and I've learned things. You never stop learning in the sport of boxing. I just try to help as many people as I can and in the process help myself so we can establish a relationship like you see today. Whenever a point comes in times where I have, where I have to prepare for something big, you know, it's there. No question asked. So I, you know, you 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 give respect when respect is due. You do on others as you want done to yourself, and uh, good things will happen from that. You know, I try to treat people the way I want to be treated, and you know, I respect everybody. You know, no matter what circumstances, if it's a fight, if it's on the street, wherever the case may be. You know, in the world, you know, I, I treat people the way I want to be treated, and I want to be respected as a as a humble, you know, respectable champion. You know, you touched upon it right there. Uh, I know being around the Houston gyms, you are the number one the guy that people want to get work in with. I mean, you get, probably because you are a, a cruiserweight or southpaw, but I mean, light heavyweights want to work with you. Heavy, big heavyweights want to work with you. You're, you're at more gyms. I've seen you at more gyms than than, than anyone else. Uh, and today's a perfect example. I mean, you got a fight coming up. You got five, six guys want to come here and give you rounds. You know. And I mean, I think it's just a testament to you how hard you work. You know, the reputation you finally built up in the city. Um, how important is it being, I mean, Houston is underrated as a boxing town, the area. I mean, how important is it for you? I mean, you get great work in this area. I mean, you got Bridget Sweet Johnson here, one of the all-time great light heavyweights. I mean, the guys you get to work with, that, that, that just adds so much to your preparation. I mean, I mean, Reggie Johnson, my first three years as a professional, I mean, when I captured my first Golden Gloves title, this man took a picture with me and that, that stuck with me up until the point now. I'm 26 years old and I still haven't forgot about that. I mean, it's things like that, working with Evander Holyfield. You know, I got, I got guys like my heavyweight, Gospel Horton, uh, 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 Larry Pryor, an up-and-coming light heavyweight uh, out of the Houston area from Gym 225. I also got a uh, uh, tough, what's his, what's his name? Lorenzo Smith. Lorenzo Smith, he's a, another good up and coming cruiserweight. He has about another week or so. He's come out and give me help. You know, uh, uh, these people I appreciate, you know, uh, uh, to the utmost. I mean, Chris Henry. Chris Henry, another up and coming cruiserweight, tough guy. Houston is one of the best kept secrets as far as professional fighters is concerned, you know, as, as far as amateurs. We have a, we have a good, 
we have a good background, we're well known, but you know, we, we're tough down here. We're the best kept secret, I believe, and I, I believe in, in, in time that's yet to come. A lot of things are gonna migrate this way. We have Rocky Juarez, Juan Diaz. We're known down here. We just have to get the word out more, you know, and uh, in due time, you know, I, you know, I just appreciate everyone that God has sent to me uh, to work with so we can help each other, man. It's, it's, a, it's uh, Dominique Gwynn, I mean, uh, uh, so many people out of the Houston area. Sergey Lakovic. Sergey Lakovic. There's so many people out in the Houston area that I could talk about that I can't, I, right <laughs> off the top of my head, I can't explain them all. But I appreciate the work and I appreciate the time that's spent and, and the effort that they, that they, they, they give me to prepare myself, man. I try to do the best that I can to help get ready and do that as well. I feel like I'm going I'm to save the calling out who, who next question until after next week's fight. And we'll be in touch after that. And uh, good luck for Friday and uh, in the future down the line. And I uh, hope it leads towards a major title fight. All right. Good luck.